Hey guys, it's Rubes here. We're getting straight into this Brothers War Draft Booster Box. We've got 36 draft boosters in here and the aim today is to beat the box and to do that we need to get 120 New Zealand dollars worth of cards worth one dollar or more which is a really cheap box I'm not sure what that would be an American but I'm guessing like 70 bucks or something so um, it's, it's definitely doable there are plenty of cards in here with value and at the back of each of these you've also got that Special artifact bonus sheet. So we've got a chance at other great cards like Worm Coil Engine, Mox Amber, and let's see how we do. Foil Forest, Sigil of Valor. So that's that uh, special bonus slot card. And Lanawar Waste, a good land to start off. Haywire Might, also one of the uncommons in the set, holding a little bit of value. So we'll keep, keep a hold of those. We have a Golem, Full Art Mountain looks nice, Ivory Tower, bonus sheet, and the Temporal Anchor, I love the art on that card, the detail of like the filigree looks so cool. Now there's not too many massive hits in this set, I think the Portal to Phyrexia is probably the, the strongest one we're looking for, and then Mox Amber would be the best out of that, those bonus sheet cards, Reconstructed Doctor. We've got a Mythic, Ramos Dragon Engine. He's awesome. His value did go down quite a lot with the printing of this set. And Harbin Vanguard Aviator. Uh, yeah, with that reprint, he, uh, he did come back quite a bit, but he's still definitely over that dollar mark, which is what we want. And we don't have to get that many of those cards in this box to hit the target. Jalem Tome, to Casey's Welcome. Go for the throat, not probably at the, the dollar amount we want, but plenty of useful cards to add to the collection, add to some decks. Adaptive Automaton and a Fortified Beachhead if you're playing one of those soldier decks. Now, this set is priced this way. I personally believe it just wasn't super popular. The power level wasn't high. Uh, the bonus sheet was attractive, but for whatever reason, similar to the set before it, Dominaria United didn't quite hit the mark. It was missing something. Found your inspector from the bonus sheet. Oh, yes. Thank you. Well, there's the portal to Phyrex here, guys. That's uh, an awesome start. Oh, my God. Man, that always happens. My Corset 21 box also found the best card about this point in the video. So uh, hopefully we can hit the target. It's still, it'll help, that'll definitely help. We've got a Mishra's Bauble and Siege Veteran. Man, <laughs> it really, really can't get better than that. It's so nice. Full Art Swamp. Ornithopter and Hercules Final Meditation. I just want to say a big thanks to you guys. Like, I'm not sure when this one's going to come out, but I've just hit 500 subs and I just think that's so cool. The support's been fantastic. So, big shout out to all of you guys there. You make it all worth it for your hulking metamorph uh, Soul Guide Lantern. And Legions to Ashes, little removal spell there. Yeah, nah, like all the comments, I love it so much. Like when I started it, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna do this for a bit of fun, but all the support makes it so worthwhile and it really makes me wanna keep going. Foil, Mishra, Tamer of Mark Fawa. Foil rare, unfortunately not a valuable one, but it's, it's nice. Self-assembler and Mechanized Warfare. Yeah, we're not going to be opening too many more draft boosters the way we're heading. Everything is going to be play boosters, including Modern Horizons 3 coming in the middle of the year. They've just announced some cards from that, and some and the pricing is really high. Like I think it's probably going to be 600 New Zealand dollars for a play box, which is just insane. Misery's Shadow. What they've also introduced are Collector Commander decks. So I guess they kind of did that with um, the Warhammer Commander decks. They had the Collector's Edition, but they're 
maybe going to make it an ongoing thing. And as far as I'm aware, the only difference is that all the cards are in foil. Whether that's worth uh, the difference or not, Swiftfoot Boots is a little little hit from that bonus sheet. And oh, nice! Muriel, Shield of Argive. She's also great. Um, I'm sure, from memory, if I'm not mistaken, she's uh, she's a couple of dollars too. So hey, I think we're... Um, we're well on track for hitting that, that pretty low target today. I had to pick this one up when I got the chance. Um, Lodestone Golem. Uh, we've got a Thran Spider. So this set, for those that don't know lore-wise, is essentially way back in time to the start of the original Magic lore. There's some time travel shenanigans that go on. So this is, is a throwback to all of that. There's lots of characters things going on that um that are all from back in that time burnished heart and platoon dispenser is our third mythic of the box i did have an interesting question also pop up in the comments asking whether you'd prefer to see half a box at a time so you can get more frequent uploads like maybe four videos a week or would you guys prefer whole boxes i'm kind of team whole box but if enough of you feel the other way, then I'm prepared to look at it. Ickle Wellspring and Razor Lash Transmogrant. Oh, another Haywire Mite's great. You know, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. I need to go pretty, uh, pretty sour from this point if we can't do it. Foil Penrigan Strongbull, Elsewhere Flask, and Mitra's Command. What else? I'm just trying to think. What are the other hits in this box? Oh, one with the multiverse, I think it's called. That's pretty nice. A blue, blue mythic. Super fun. I play it in my Emoti Commander deck. Chromatic Star and Titania's Command. It's cool. Yeah, we got old characters like Titania's back. Obviously Mishra, Urza, the original Planeswalker. It's pretty sweet. But I guess this set didn't resonate as much with current players. I'd like to know whether you guys think that's because it's all quote unquote old lore stuff or because it was just the power level. Clay Revenant Foil. Lodestone Golem number two, okay. And Kayla's Reconstruction. I'm gonna have a very quick tidy up here. Put Ramos in the Mythic pile. Okay, so yeah, I think we are pretty much halfway there, guys. Full Up Forest, Sigil of Valor, and Queen Kayla in Krug. Liquid Metal Coating, turning things into artifacts. And oh, that is a nice rare there. Diabolic Intent, that is definitely over the dollar target amount. Very cool, like to see that. Um, yeah, they've also just confirmed, speaking of bonus sheets, that for Outlaws of Thunder Junction, they're gonna have cards of com people committing crimes. So the example they showed was Thoughtseize, another Ickle Wellspring from the bonus sheet, and a Full Art Brushland. That's gotta be, them. I guess that's a brush lad and the art, I don't know, it doesn't look uh, especially interesting maybe, but full art's always, it's always pretty cool. I do prefer it to the regular art I guess, so it's not all bad. Uh, whoa, foil, old border, door to nothingness. That's, that's, that's great. I don't know that it's uh, too good, but hey. Um, and then a foil black, sorry, not foil, but the black blade reforged, another rare, and Ashnod flesh machinist, mechanist, I should say. Brilliant. We have a planes, millstone, Tornos, the toy maker. Oof. 
Foundry Inspector and Saranth Great Worm. I'm not familiar with this card at all. Trample. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, create a tapped Power Stone token. Whenever a land, so does that mean when your opponents play a land? Because I think it does. Wow. The only problem with those Power Stone tokens that it is referring to is that you can only use them to pay mana. Sorry, it can't be used to cast non-artifact spells, so you can use it for other things. There you go, that's the Power Stone token there. Um, but still, you can pump mana into like creature abilities and things of that nature. Uh, Sword of the Meek. Lauren of the Third Path, she is another good rare. Great. Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty okay about this box. Again, target so low, I think. Surely, <laughs> famous last words. Uh, Mishra's Volvel again. Visions of Phyrexia, I like this in my Alibu Commander deck, it's pretty handy. One last question for you guys today is, what's the last pack you opened? Why did you open it? I just guess I'm trying to get a bit of a feel for what your decisions making processes are when you're deciding to buy a pack. Rune. Chanters Pike, Simeon, Simulacrum. Yeah, because like, for me, I'm looking for sets that are, you know, interesting, entertaining, or, you know, they've got a good monetary value where I've got a decent chance of getting my money back. Uh, that's certainly appealing. Aeronaut, Cavalry, and Foil, uh, Pristine Talisman, and Teeming Wormlet. He's a cute little fella, look at him. I think that Sarah's Great Worm must be his dad or something. Oh, foil rare is Tertian Mindbreaker. Makes your, your mates, oh, whoa, unwinding clock. I think that's, I know it used to be really expensive because it was only in a commander pre-con, but I think that is decent. Oh, and we have Urza, Lord Protector. He is especially cool because he melds into a Planeswalker. That's one half, so you need to have the other card in play, the Might Stone and the Weak Stone. If you've got both of them, you are able to transform them into the Planeswalker card. I'll pop the full Planeswalker up so you guys can have a look, but it is really strong. But the trade-off is that it's so difficult to get out. It's not just a matter of playing a card. Uh, door to Nothingness, number two. Transmogrant's Crown. Cool, no, nah, I, I gotta say, like, I'm, there's plenty of cool, good stuff in this here. Like, I know, I, hey, at $120 a box, I'm not complaining, I guess is what it comes down to. Bonesaw, Bonesaw is ready for all your Spider-Man 1 fans. And we have the Stasis Coffin. Pile these up one last time. Final five. Oh, spoilers. We have a Gilded Lotus, that's great. I think that must just get over that dollar mark. And another Tertian Mindbreaker. Excellent. I'd be keen to open Dominaria United, but that's it. There's obviously Shieldred, which is a $100 card, and otherwise there is not much going on for it at all. So you're chasing one Mythic, which you might have a one in three, one in 3.5 chance of getting per box. It's probably not worth it. We've got a key to the city and another Brushland. Very good. Yeah, I, I think I do prefer the full art. I think I do. Uh, third path iconoclast as well, I think. Might just sneak in. Really good token maker. Might sneak in over that dollar threshold too. Ashnod's Harvester. Foil. And oh, another mythic. The bonus sheet's been good, good to us today. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you may pay one if you do draw a card. So a sort of similar wristic study. Ish effect, and we got Hajar, loyal bodyguard. He's a good dude. I think he uh, he can go straight into my Anzra commander deck. Uh, that's awesome. Forest and chromatic star. 
Felden Ronom Excavator. Get in some of those mono red standard decks, I think. Uh, and we are at our last bag. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to see more, please consider uh, subscribing, liking, leave a comment if you've got anything you'd like to say back to my questions earlier on. Uh, here we go. It is Bonesaw. Bonesaw is ready. And Urza, Prince of Krug in the alternate art. And that is our box today, guys. Did we beat it? I'm gonna say yeah. I think I think we did. Probably only just though. Wasn't uh, wasn't insane. But thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you all so much. Subscribe, like if you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.